humbly stand as you're able for our hymn of praise when I survey the wondrous cross. is a traditional version of the Apostles' Creed. It's number 881 in your pew hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please you see.
Please be seated as you are able to. It's prayer time, church. I had someone yesterday come to me and ask me, knowing that I was a minister, do you believe that we're living in end times? And I said, good question. With what's happening around the world, in our community, the shooting, the killing, all the hate running rapidly, rampant in our community, the neighborhood. The end is near. We don't know the day, nor the hour, but the end is near. It should behoove us to prepare ourselves to love one another, to love God with all our whole heart, and to love one another. And if we don't love, ask God to teach us how to love. Part of my prayer is today for God, teach us to love our neighbor. Who is our neighbor? Take a moment of silence to talk to God in your own way. And you pray that God will teach you how to love. And I pray that God will teach me how to love. And, and we pray together. Let us pray. Lord, we cannot love the way you want us to love, O oh God, nor are we able. But allow your Holy Spirit, God, to teach us, to move us, to pray, and to love, and to love, and to love. And Lord, we do thank you. Forgive us, O oh God, of our sins, our shortcomings. Forgive us, O oh God, of the hatred we have in our hearts against each other sometimes, and God, the mean words we say sometimes, and Lord, we just say thank you. Forgive us, O oh God. Teach us how to love. We pray, God, for the conditions around the world. We pray, God, the world you made, O oh God, you want us to live together in it. We pray, O oh God, for the Ukraine and Russia situation and other places, O oh God, where people are still spewing out hate. And no God, we just thank you, God, because Lord God, we pray for a revival. Revive us again, O oh God, so that we might be able to love, that we might be able to commune with one with each other, that we might be in fellowship with one another. And may your Holy Spirit guide us and keep us, O oh God, and continue, God, to bless the church, the church members, and the community we are part of, O oh God. And God, please show up in a way, O oh God, that you never showed up in our lives. And God will give them name to praise, to honor, and glory. And now, God, as your children, we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. <coughs> Amen.
united for one cause, for the love, to be able to change the world. So um, as we're going through this, the clues, well, Pius will play, play a little thing in between, because uh, I'd like you to be able to sing with us. But it's very simple. I am Boyd, I am Gore. We are a million voices singing. You're going to add to our millions. Okay? Each one of you will probably say at least worth 100,000. So, when I turn around, you're going to join us on We Are a Million Voices Singing. Testament reading this morning is Isaiah 43, 16 through 21. If you'd care to follow along in your pew Bible, it's on page 632. God is talking about making a new thing. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quick quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people 
the people who I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. Our epistle lesson is Philippians 3, 4b through 14 on page 187 of the New Testament portion of your pew Bible. And Paul is writing, even though I too have a reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own beloved. I do not consider that I've made it my own, but this is the one thing that I do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God is in Christ Jesus. And our, our lesson, the lesson today is not the one that she printed in the large yes large part it is John 12 1 through 8 on page 100 so I'm gonna to have to slow down since the print is smaller um, often when we give a gift people will judge us our gift wasn't worthy or we could have done something else or maybe it's not enough or maybe it's silly and at that point, you really need to tell yourself, Satan, take a hike. This isn't between you and me. We have a story here about Jesus's treasurer, and I always get a little nervous when I start talking about church treasurers. <laughs> <laughs> Judas Iscariot basically controlled the pocketbook of Jesus and his followers. And they are visiting Jesus' friend, Lazarus, and Mary and Martha. And Mary gives a gift. And technically, Judas is right. You could have done a lot of stuff with that money that you spent. But it's not your gift to give, and it's not your gift to judge. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Mary served, and Lazarus was one at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why is this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. The word of the Lord. Thank you. I want to thank Linda for reading and sharing the word of God with us. And as we have heard the word, let us prepare to give to God. We have a nice piece basket for the men, the United Methodist men offering, a plate for the regular tithe and offering.
Dear God, we bring ourselves to you again to give you all of us, as well as the tithe, gift, and offering. And now, God, receive us all in your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. This is my, one of my favorite times of the year, to be able to stand to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and to say to you that Christ is still alive. And the reason why I know Christ is alive because he's alive in my soul. Every day, not just this time, not just this season, but I want to draw emphasis on that for a second, just a second to let you know that Christ is not dead. God is not dead. And if he is, where did they bury him? Christ is alive today, and we make that more alive. Even today in the world, and people say sometimes, where is God? God is still in the world doing what God needs to do. I was thinking this week, and thank you, Linda, for reading the scripture, but speaking to the time and what's going on in the world, I looked at Psalm 126, and I take the time to read this in your hearing. When the Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better, it was like we had been dreaming. Our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter and our tongues filled with joyful shouts. It was even said at that time among the nations the Lord has done great things. The Lord has done great things. Not us, but the Lord. Lord, change our circumstances for the better. Let the dry stream in the desert. And the last verse I read, let those who go out crying and carrying their seed come home with joyful shouts, carrying bales of grain. Let us pray. God, we need revival in our souls, in our lands. And Lord, please send a revival here at Cranford today. Revival so God again to continue to do your work. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The, this division of Psalm 126 speaks to us today in, in many ways. Let me grab my notes here. And, and at the same time, when I read it, I got happy as I was reading uh, the scriptures this week. Uh, Okay, come on here. Revive us again. We need this today, church. We need to be reminded that it is God who can revive us and for God who can restore our fortune. Many of you are familiar with the uh, Old Testament reading scriptures and reading from Ezekiel, the Valley of Dry Bones, and the question came, can these bones live? And when God blew on them, they began to move and began to shake, began to rattle, rock and roll, if you will. <laughs> and I thought about uh, Everest Pressure this past week. When I talk about that, you know, Evans was a great singer, a great person to move and all kinds uh, of things. But at the same time, can the bones live, be revived? And I say, revive us again, God, because, Lord, we need to be revived. In our world, in our nation, uh, we need to be revived. There's so much going on. And we still guide our fortune and let your will continue to be done. I want to say that, and as you, many of you might know, war is very destructive. No one wins. Everyone loses, whether you're in it or out. The war in Ukraine is devastating, just to watch, just to see. People, innocent people, innocent lives 
have nothing to do with the decision that is made, but at the same time, uh, my prayer especially for them every day, not one day, but every day. I was talking with my dentist uh, uh, some years ago. Uh, he, some years ago, he's from Cambodia, and uh, when the Vietnam War was going on, he was telling me about how it was, how he had to escape, escape and shift out away from family and friends at the same time. And, and he lived, he's here now as an American citizen, but at the same time, he said, war is bad. It tears a country apart, tears family apart, tears the world apart. And it defies God's word. When God tells us to love and not hate, no one uh, can give a good reason for war. Why do you fight? Even among ourselves, we fight with each other. We fight one another. For what reason? Where is the love that Christ teaches us where is the love that Christ tells us to love God with our whole heart, whole mind, whole soul, mind, body, and at the same time cannot love our neighbors? I don't like to read the news, but I keep read it sometime to be informed in terms of what's going on in the world. And what I see is not good. We need a revival. We need to be revived again. And that God wants us to live with and love one another. The psalmist pleads for a complete restoration for Zion. He wants their dream to no longer be shattered or forgotten. He wants them to come to pass. He wants peace and laughter again so the people be able to laugh with one another and, and break, embrace one another. He wants them to be revived. And they want to be renewed and to be restored. What does that look like? Can you imagine what that would look like today in our world we live in, all around the world, not here only in America, but in Russia, Ukraine, all other countries in Africa? Uh, what that would look like? And many races, many people, many nations have gone through their time of war. Uh, I think about in the early 80s, uh, Rhodesia uh, were going to a war. Uh, people were fighting one another, and for what? For what? And just think, I was thinking this week that if we have not had those wars over, over in Iraq, Vietnam, uh, at the same time, what would it look like today? We need more love. I think at the beginning of the pandemic, I said that uh, the world, what the world needs today is love, sweet love. We need love and more love. And we never can have enough love. We need to love again. At the same time, uh, some therapists say laughter is good for your soul. It's good sometimes just to laugh rather than carrying a frown on your face from time to time. Smile, laugh, and at the same time, always Smile. Let the world know that there is hope in you as a Christian and follow Jesus Christ. When you smile, the world smiles. When you frown, the world frowns. So keep that in mind. That's a side note. That's a free advice I give you. No charge, but just do it. <laughs> we thank God for that. The psalmist wants complete. The Lord has done great things. The Lord will do Great thing. The Lord has revived our soul. And so at the same time, the psalmist at least knows who we throw our fortunes, Lord, like slain in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with song of joy. Wouldn't it be nice to be happy? No matter what comes of People are going to say things, and the world, if you listen to the world standard, they'll always keep you. And, and Shirley Cecil, a gospel singer, sang this song many years ago. This joy I have, the world did not give it to me, and the world cannot take it from me. Isn't that a bold affirmation? This joy I have, God gives us the joy. No situation, no matter what's going on, how bad it looks, God is in 
control. God is good, amen? And, God, and we should praise God all the time. If God does nothing else in our lives, we should thank God for what God is already doing and what is God going to do. I don't put my faith and trust in man. As you know, for the 17 years I've been here, we have always put our faith in God, trust in God, not man. I can recall, uh, and I would mention this, Pius, I'm not to embarrass you, but we were, uh, Mitch had played for the church many years as a church musician uh, and did a great job and still love Mitch. And Mitch is part of our family as well and his family. But what we did that Sunday, um, conversation with my lady leader, Linda's been here since then. Uh, she said, well, why don't we ask Mitch to stay a little bit longer? And I said, no, I don't think we need to do that. Mitch has been traveling from where he's lived, Austin, back over where he lived. And the man needs some rest for his life. I said, the Lord will provide, amen? Do you know the Lord will provide? And guess what? The Sunday, Mitch last Sunday on the piano here, guess who sat back in the congregation? That young man, uh, the king, Pius. And the next Sunday, he resumed playing. This is the faith you got to have. And know that God will provide. This is God. Church, not Lorenzo, not the United Methodist Church, but this is God's church, and we got to worship God and give God praise. Amen? Amen? Nothing that we did, no magic pill, but just believe God. And God will provide all of our needs according to his riches in the heaven. I don't know, uh, I guess I'm crazy, I guess. I, I believe the word said it, and I believe that God will provide, God will make my every need, and they're not worried about things, but just pray about things. And if we take the time to pray and not worry, then things are happen faster. It's getting good up here. I got to, got to, got to, got to cut it short. <laughs> so we need, we need joy. Amen? We need joy. And in this passage of scripture, we see joy mentioned over 50 times. Uh, joy, and, and uh, there's a time. When, when we get happy, we, we, get, and we shouldn't be sad. We should be, have joy. And this joy I have, the world did not give it to me and the world did not take it from me. I'm going to be happy. You know, you, you see Lorenzo Hill for Lorenzo Hill today, tomorrow, and forever because you always see me, I'm, I'm laughing. When you see me frowning, did, did you worry? But when you see me laughing, uh, joking, and carrying on, that, that's me. That's my nature. I love to be in, in, in harmony with God. And the book of Psalms contains contain more joy in this particular chapter. We all, first of all, I need to say, we all need to be revived. Just say, we all need to be revived. We all need to be revived. And there's a song that we sing in our hymn book. Lord, revive us again. And throughout the day, if you get the chance, say, Lord, revive me. When you feel yourself fainting and getting weak, going the wrong direction, going off the path, uh, your faith begins to waver. Just know that, God, we need to be revived. And uh, we praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love, for Jesus who died for all of our sin. Jesus died to make us Whole again. So, Lord, we need revival not only at the end. We, we celebrate this time of the year, and we know that uh, in the Lent season, we know that uh, even the uh, person who had died over in the book of John uh, were revived again. Were revived again. Got life then, and we'll receive life again. So, we thank God. And so the psalmist goes on to say that then our mouth will be filled with laughter and our tongue with joy. One psychologist said that it's good to laugh. Uh, there's a therapy. People laugh, laughter therapy. If you laugh, you bring out the, the, something inside you chemically uh, to make you feel better again. You're not sick. Laughter is a natural response. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. It's free. A smile is free. You don't have to pay for it. 
And I think if we could capture that, we'll probably sell it. But it's free. So when we think about today, where we stand as a country, as a church, as a community, we need to know that God is God. And God wants us to have joy. And I say, Lord God, revive us again. And sometimes during the day, I say, Lord, revive us again. And we thank God. And we thank God. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Thank you, God, for your people who are gathered here today. And for this, your word. And for the church, oh God, you allow us to be in. In this day, time, and moment. Revive us again, O God, and Lord, we are revived because of your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, today is Holy Communion. I was mentioning to Linda earlier that I'm not going to go through the ritual, the whole ritual, uh, just for the sake of time. Uh, but at the same time, this is an important aspect. Holy Communion is an important aspect in our Christian faith. It's representative of Christ's body broken and shed for us. And the cup represents Christ's blood that was shed for us to wash us from all of our unrighteousness and sin. So we're not going to go through the liturgy today, as I said. As we come, you, you have a cup. We thank God, the COVID, this is COVID communion. We don't have to go and invent anything. We, if you don't have one, I give you a chance to get one. Anybody else? Need? If you have problem pulling the tabs off, which I do sometimes, Okay, got that good. As you open it, the bread is inside. When you when you get to it, get it open and read it, say amen. 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 That's great. Amen. amen. <laughs> God, we are thankful, God, to come to this your holy table, holy communion table. Uh, we come, we eat Christ's body together, broken, and then the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. We also drink from the cup, as Christ commands us all to do. We drink together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Linda will now come give us a prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Christ, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this time. Um, and at the same time, I'm not rushing, but I do need to be somewhere and some other people need to leave, but I want to say that uh, we thank God for this opportunity. And we continue to pray and ask God to revive us, and not only today, but tomorrow and, and forever. And now as we prepare to leave the service, but never God present, go in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and all the communion of his Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Uh, they got a closing hymn, dedication, come ye, the consulate 510 in your hymn book.
When you find it, please stand and let's sing together. service but never God present, go and ask God to revive us again. Revive us again. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>